Okay, uh, we're going to go through the magnitude of velocity, which I neglected to do so correctly. Let me adjust the camera. And we're also going to do a force one and reading a graph as far as direction and whether it decreases or increases as far as your velocity. So these are the factors that I see when I'm going through here. And the most operative words here are north and east. So that kind of tells you right at the very beginning that you are doing a displacement sort of equation. You are trying to find velocity. So you're going to have to pay attention to the drawing part of this. So let's go with this part first. Um, we're always going to think with the magnitude of velocity, I have to figure out both of these parts. So first of all, we do have those parts. We're just going to have to figure out the other distance part. So let's say I'm going in this direction and I'm going 400 meters total distance at 18 meters per second. Since we have to figure out both parts on this, we're going to have to figure out our second parts here. Now on the next one, or the other part, I'm going 800 meters at 15 meters per second. So for that situation, I am going to have to figure out a displacement amount or distance for that. So we're going to have to figure out this part. What is the only way you can figure out this part using these factors here? Because you're not going to be given an angle or anything, so you don't have to do anything tricky as far as uh, trigonometry. You just have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So in order to figure out this one, I will put as x. We're going to put 400 squared plus 800 squared equals c squared. So it's going to be your a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if you kind of do, do this up in your head, <coughs> you're going to have 160,000 plus, uh, let's see, 640,000. Hopefully the math is correct. That's my total. So my total between these two amounts is this. Then I just have to take the square root in order to solve for C. So it's 800,000. Uh, you're going to see that you're going to need a calculator for this. So this is going to be 894.5 feet, and I'm just going to round it. In most cases, it'll work out pretty well. So that's going to be my distance, which is in meters. So that's going to be the displacement. Now I have to solve for my meters per second. Well, first of all, I'm going to have to have my seconds. So i got to get my number down here. So, well, how many seconds is this? Well, if I'm doing this at this, we know that we have to take these two values and actually divide to figure out my number of uh, seconds. Because we do need to know the time. So we'll go 22.2 seconds here. And uh, this one's going to be 53.3 seconds. So what is the total lapse time going from here to here? That amount. So it's 53.3 plus 22.2. .2. 
my total is 75.5 seconds. And then I divide 894.5 divided by 75.5, and you end up with 11.85 meters per second. <coughs> um, it is going to be a shorter amount or a shorter velocity because you have to take into account this and this. That would be my magnitude of velocity for this situation here. Now let's change it out a little bit. We can switch it around a little bit and it'll be the same magnitude of velocity, but now we can put in here seconds. So let's go 15,000 seconds. And let's go 18,000 seconds. I can do the same distances. Or I can do a velocity. Either one is fine. Let's go with the velocity. Let's uh, get the numbers down a little bit. Those are kind of extreme. So we'll go 4.5 and 8.3 meters per second. <coughs> we have the same situation. You have to draw it out the same way. So we go like this. We go like this. We're traveling at 4.5 meters per second here. 8.3 meters per second here. This is my east direction. That's my north direction. We go here. Um, we do have a time component here now. So this one is going to be 15,000 seconds, and this is going to be uh, 18,000 seconds. Now the problem with this one, we already have our seconds, so we got our bottom part. Now we just have to figure out our distance part. Now if I'm going 8.3 meters per second for 48,000 seconds, instead of dividing, now I just have to multiply. So it's going to be 8.3 times 18,000 seconds. And this is going to be my distance, 149400 meters. Again, I just follow process. And on this one, I do the same procedure. So it's not really a cut and dry thing, it's not really a percentage thing like uh, you could do, and I made that mistake, but now i got my two numbers here. Now what I have to do, Pythagorean theorem, figure out my distance from here to here, which is my x in meters, so i got 67,500 squared plus this distance squared, and that equals c squared. Now your numbers are going to come out extremely high, but again, we're just doing this for friends and giggles. And again, purpose of the calculator. It's a little more time consuming for this. Give me an exponent in this case. Apparently the number was too large. <coughs> so now I have this. And then I'm going to add these two guys together. So I've got four, five, five, six, two, five, zero, 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 zero. And I end up with 2.688 times 10 to the 10th. Now, most of the time, you won't be dealing with this issue as far as uh, solving. And then again, I have to take the square root in order to get rid of that c squared. So I'm going to go square root 2.68766 exponent 10. Again, following procedure, 
my distance here is going to come out as 163.941 meters. Again, that's going to be kind of your procedure for everything. Now I have the two factors I need. Here are my seconds, here are my seconds, here are my meters. All I have to do now is just simply divide. And I got this and this, so that's going to be 33,000 seconds. You're going to see that it's kind of working out where it should be. The velocity will actually be less than these two values. Uh, actually, no. I guess we have a traveling problem that's going to make it a little higher. But this will be my magnitude of velocity on this sort of thing. So again, you have to do a little thought process and maybe think that you got more steps than you have to do. So this takes care of this. I guess we can do a simplistic one. Should get a little easier as we're doing it. Let's say maybe now we're going to do the distance. Make it a little more straightforward. Let's say I have 900 meters north, 800 meters east. <coughs> now it's going to simplify things because I already have my values for this. I have my distance here, I have my distance here, east, north, starting point, ending point. Um, I do have to figure out this distance. It's nice because I already have these. Um, I don't really have to worry about the velocity between these because that's not going to be relevant because this is what I'm trying to find. I can easily figure these out. Um, so let's go 800 squared, 900 squared, again Pythagorean theorem. So what is 800 squared? Oh, 64, uh, uh, with four zeros, and 81 with four zeros. That equals your C squared. Then you're going to do a square root on both. So you got looks like I went back one, one too many places. 640,000 plus 810,000, you get a total, then you have to do your square root. Uh, square root, uh, early morning. Uh, get this in here. already set up so I could do it easily. So my velocity is going to be oh, oh. that's going to be my distance which is meters and then I've got to do my seconds. So it's going to be divided by 33,000 seconds. So it's going to be 1204 divided by 33,000. So my velocity in this case would be 0 0.0365 meters per second. I'm not really worrying about that. So that would be my magnitude of velocity here. Um, if you ran those numbers in, you'd find they probably might be a little bit <coughs> slightly higher. Uh, slightly lower, but again, I follow proper procedures in figuring out this type of question. That would be your magnitude of velocity.